Hello and welcome to this series of videos on the nervous system. This is the first video lesson and the topic is an introduction to the nervous system. In this first lesson we will look first at the organization of the nervous system first in simple animals, then in complex animals, we will then take a look at the main cellular components of the nervous system, namely nerve cells, or better known as neurons, and then neuroglia, which are a variety of cells that act as support systems for neurons. Let's start with the organization of the nervous system in simple animals. These animals process information with a simple network of diffused neurons known as nerve net. We can find nerve nets in the early nervous systems to evolve in animals, such as these cnidarians, like the sea anemone and the hydra. A closer look at a nerve net in hydra reveals a diffuse network of neurons found throughout the body. These neurons do not exhibit any particular organizational complexity. A nerve net typically provides direct lines of communication from sensory cells to effector cells such as muscle cells. In animals with higher levels of nervous system complexity such as the one found in earthworms, the nervous system is more organized and consists of cluster of neurons called ganglia from which peripheral nerves emanate. These ganglia are typically connected to each other by a certain type of nerve cord, as shown in the nervous system of this earthworm. The most anterior part of ganglia is usually larger and more central and is sometimes considered as the brain of the animal. In more complex animals, such as those with vertebral columns like humans, the nervous system consists of two main components, the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system consists of the brain and spinal cord. The central nervous system communicates with other body parts via nerves and ganglia, which collectively are known as the peripheral nervous system. Information originating from peripheral body parts, such as the skin, eyes, and muscles are transmitted to the central nervous system via sensory neurons. This information is processed in the central nervous system by interneurons or integration neurons. And responses are sent to the center by the central nervous system to effector organs via a type of neurons known as motor neurons. Nervous tissues consist of two general types of cells, neurons or nerve cells, which are specialized excitable cells capable of communicating with each other and other cells in the body by generating and propagating electrical signals known as nerve impulses. And the second type of cells in the nervous tissue are known as glial cells. These are cells that support the activity of neurons by providing electric insulation for axons and by providing nutrients and protection from potentially harmful factors. Let's examine the structure of neurons in nervous tissue. If we zoom in on one of these neurons in this nervous tissue, we can see a typical neuron, a typical motor neuron. This cell has four main structural regions. The dendrites, such as these here, which are cellular extensions that act as input zones by receiving signals from other cells or from their environment. The second one is the cell body, or soma, which is the central part of the cell. It contains the nucleus 
than most of the essential organelles needed for cell functioning. The third part is the axon. The axon is a prominent cellular extension that transmits nerve impulses away from the cell body towards the axon terminals. Nerve impulses are generated by a special area known as the axon hillock, which connects the cell body to the axon. The last region of the axon is the axon terminals. Axon terminals are specialized structural areas known as synapses. These synapses are capable of communicating with other cells by releasing chemical signals known as neurotransmitters. Glial cells perform important functions for the proper functioning of neurons. An example of such cells are the astrocytes, shown here, found in the central nervous system. These cells contribute to the formation of the blood-brain barrier, which protects the central nervous system from toxic chemicals circulating in the blood by acting as a physical barrier to their diffusion from the blood to nervous tissue. Astrocytes perform their function by wrapping their cellular extensions around small blood vessels in the central nervous system. Other glial cells act as electric insulators of axons. Two main types of glial cells are involved in this function, Schwann cells and oligodendrocytes. Schwann cells insulate axons of neurons found in the peripheral nervous system. They do so by wrapping their plasma membranes around axons. The result of this process is covering of the axon along most of its surface while leaving axonal membranes between Schwann cells exposed. These exposed regions are known as the nodes of Ranvier. Oligodendrocytes are the counterparts of Schwann cells in the central nervous system. They provide electric insulation of axons in the central nervous system. Electric insulation provided by both types of cells is the result of the lipid material known as myelin. Myelin is found in the membrane wrappings around axons. And this concludes our first video on the nervous system.